Imagine hearing an odd sound that can't be explained. Or seeing a shadowy figure move, but no one is there. A light flickers. You feel a cold breath on your neck. Is it your imagination? Or is it real? In 1863, Virginia City, Montana, hundreds of people are murdered in this lawless frontier town. Even the sheriff is hanged. Chris and Jim think that Virginia City is a real ghost town because every house is haunted. Tonight, they dare each other to stay until midnight in the two most haunted places in the ghost town called Virginia City. November 2000, Syracuse, New York. 14-year-old Joe writes and directs amateur horror movies. But the movie Joe is about to make isn't fiction. In fact, what happens in his newest film is very real. Tonight, Tonight Joe, Joe directs, directs and stars in his first real-life horror film, The 13 Curves. These are the real stories of actual encounters with the bizarre and the unknown. These are real, scary stories. In the winter, the population of Virginia City drops to about 100. If, if you, you don't, don't count the dead. Virginia City is definitely haunted. Definitely, I think this town is haunted. The majority of people that have lived here have seen ghosts. There's been numerous sightings in Virginia City. I'm Jaina and I live in a haunted town. The whole place is haunted. Virginia City is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Our closest town is Bozeman, and it's like 60 miles away. So we're kind of isolated, I guess you could say. There's only about 100 people that live here during the winter, and so it kind of gets a really eerie feeling. This whole town has a history of murder and violence, and I think that's why you know, things are unsettled here. Gold was discovered here May 26, 1863 with the coming of uh, a large number of prospectors. The crime was out of control. You know, more than a murder a day happening on the streets here. The local citizens took the law into their own hands. Started hanging bad guys. Everyone that was murdered back then just kind of hangs around here. This town seems to have spirits, I would think, in just about every building. The Ellings House, the Bonanza Inn, the Bonanza House, the Lightning Splitter, they're all haunted. You hear stories, it can't be disputed. There's a lot of spirits here. The scariest place in my town is the Ellings House. The Elling House was built by Henry Elling, the banker of town. The story is that he killed all of his family, everyone in different rooms in a different way. The house sat empty for 40 years. You know, no one lived there. For years now, um, all the kids in Virginia City have always seen a man standing in the very top window. We think that it's Mr. Elling. I was <clears throat> talked into going into the Elling House by my other brother and me and a friend of mine, James, went in there and uh, explored the place. And I walked into a room, came back out, and uh, he disappeared. So I spent a half an hour in the house walking around looking for him, heard a scream and an eerie fingernails on a chalkboard noise. Something was clawing at the walls. Finally, got to the point where I was so scared that I just huddled up in a corner and uh, sat there and waited. And a little while later, my friend and his older brother came into the house and uh, found me in a corner. And I have not been back in the house alone since. It's a little creepy to be alone in the fair weather. Two years ago, there was a clerk working, and there was no one in the hotel. There had been no one there for uh, a couple days. And she was sitting at the desk. All of a sudden, she heard banging in the room above her. And um, there was pounding on the floors. And then she heard something break. So she went upstairs, and all the sheets and blankets were torn off the bed. Tables and furniture was knocked over, and there was no sign of anyone in the room whatsoever, and it was locked. Tonight, I'm daring my friend Chris to stay alone in the Elling house till midnight. And I've dared Jaina to stay in the Fairweather till midnight. Now that this dare has been brought up, I'm, I'm a little more nervous as it's getting closer, but I'm determined to make it. At first, Jaina was afraid to be in the Fairweather Inn alone. Then she wished she was. There's something outside my room. And it's walking. Chris
Chris and Jaina dared each other to stay alone in a haunted place. Whoever made it until midnight would walk away the winner if they didn't run away. I want to go to the right weather, dude. And you have to stay in your place. I'll bet you you chicken out. Midnight. Let me do this. Midnight. I'll meet you back here. Okay. Chris and I decided to each take in a flashlight, a video camera that had night vision on it, and a candle. Once we got into the building and our designated room that we were going to stay, that the candle was the only thing that we were going to have lit. No flashlights until midnight. OK, this is it. Oh, boy. It's dark. For some reason, the second time going in this house is worse than the first. It's like something out of a horror movie. This is room number 10. I know people have seen spirits here. Okay. That was creepy. Oh, okay. I'm in room 10. And this is, well, it's kind of covered up, but that's the window that Mr. Allen looks out, or his ghost looks out. I my candle. It's light. Okay, that was a light. I can see my breath. It's so cold. <laughs> I'm gonna watch my candle. I can't tell you how I'm feeling right now. I wanna see something, don't wanna see something. Let's check out the ceiling in this place. I look pretty cute. There wasn't much for them to do except wait for something to happen. Then, then suddenly, suddenly, the waiting was over for Jaina. happen <laughs> wondering if it's gonna come from behind if it's gonna come through the walls or if it's just gonna appear right in front of me Okay, that was the scariest thing I've heard all night. 
kind of glad that nothing actually happened to me. Time's not up yet. Why is the time going so slow? It's like hours, hours. Our chair, our candle. Candle's still going. I don't want to say it, but I just keep waiting for that door not to turn. That's my biggest fear right now. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Clock has struck twelve. It's midnight. I did it. It's midnight. Take our candle with us. So we end our journey. I know. I know something is outside that door. And I know I have to go outside that door. <sighs> okay. I don't think anything. It's <sighs> not. Finally, getting out of the Fairweather Inn was the most relieving thing. When I heard the walking, it was really creepy. It was so close, and it just, it was, at that point, I was ready to give up. But I had already told myself prior to going in the hotel that no matter what, I was not going to leave. So if I had to stand there and scream all night, that's what I was going to do, because I was going to stay there till midnight. Did you make it? I made it. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm so freaked out. I was counting the seconds. Did you see a ghost? No. Even though I didn't see a ghost, um, I felt like I had conquered a fear. You have a bad experience, and uh, it's kind of like getting back on a horse and after you get bucked off. There is absolutely no doubt that there was something standing outside my door, and then I felt it leave. There's no doubt in my mind it was there. Joe likes to write and direct his own horror films. But the horror film he's making now isn't fiction. And he's in it. A car accident, a dead bride, a seance. Joe knew, knew all of the elements, elements of his new horror film, film though, though none of them were under his control. It is a dangerous stretch of road. The old timers, they say they are somewhat intimidated to go down on the 13 curves at night. I know my mom gets spooked out every time she drives on it because of the legend. The seventh curve of the 13 curves is called Dead Man's Curve. And that's where the accident supposedly happened. So uh, what's your name? My name's Alexis. What's your name? Stephanie. OK, I'm getting ready to go out there and uh, make a documentary about 13 curves. Uh, we're going to head out there tonight, and we're going to be with a psychic and have a seance. I started making movies uh, probably three years ago, and I, I make a lot of more like scary movies. I just uh, got finished making a movie called Bev Rage, about an uh, evil can that came to life and like, kind of killed people. The road itself is actually Cedar Vale Road, but they just call it 13 Curves because the road has 13 curves on it. Ever since I've been a rookie, I've heard the legend of the 13 Curves. The seventh curve of the 13 Curves is called Dead Man's Curve. And that's where the accident supposedly happened. There's a legend of the area that um, a bride was killed um, on her wedding night, and it's been reported that she has been sighted on certain evenings um, similar to night like tonight. Well, I heard that um, that the groom was driving and that he was drunk. 
it was snowy outside and he, he slid on some ice and ran into a tree. The husband, I don't know if he died, but the wife did, and both parties were killed. But apparently she did not go on, she, so she still lingers on the curves and comes out looking for him. When I was a child, about 12 years of age, uh, I was on a trip with my parents and their friends, and we were on like the sixth or seventh curve, and uh, my father yelled, you're gonna hit that lady to the driver of the car, and I was sitting between my father and the driver, and I looked right up, and I saw this beautiful lady in a white gown, veil, everything, and she just kind of like floated right through the car. When the ghost bride came through to the car, as she came through, you could feel a coolness. Well, the reason you feel cold sometimes when there's, when there's a spirit around is because they use energy to move. So since they're depleting the heat, it feels colder where they are. You could feel her presence. You had enough time to know that there was somebody there. When we first got into the car, it was uh, pretty amazing. Um, the, the car was a 1941 DeSoto. It was, it was all black, and um, it looked pretty creepy, I think. You think this car is going to help attract the ghost? I hope so, because it's the car they were driving when they got into the car crash. Right now, we're headed to the seventh curb. Are you guys uh, scared at all? I'm getting there, yes. And it's sort of nerve-wracking because of everything goes. Wow. I'm not sure if I believe in all the, uh, the sand stuff. And I never, I don't know anyone who's ever been to one. I'm kind of I'm excited to see how one goes. This is where it happened. Seventh curve, of course, in those days, there was no guardrail here. All right, so uh, what are you feeling right now? Well, just there's a sense of a lot of energy building up in the area in the woods behind us. Have there been any uh, sightings around here? Oh, yeah, quite a few. In fact, God, over the last 30 years, I've probably talked to 40 or 50 people that have had, that have seen the woman. Okay, before we, we begin, I just want to explain first off that you, because we're dealing with a spirit, there's no voice box, there's no physical body. So when you hear something, you'll hear it telepathically. You'll hear it in your head like your own voice will talk to yourself. So it's very important if you hear something, it's possible the rest of us may not hear it. So it's important that you just say to us, I just heard someone say something. Okay, what we're going to do is join hands and concentrate on opening your energy to any spirit or any entity that may be around and maybe looking for someone to help. anything happened to her that she might have died. So then all of a sudden they were, I heard the word accident very loudly. Didn't just hear a woman. I would just hear someone yell help. Like there was another presence in the car. It was weird because it felt like she was sitting in the middle of us trying to get each and every one of our attention. Something definitely happened. I don't, it might have been a spirit, 
Did you feel anything? I felt a lot of stuff. I felt my when the cold was coming in, my hands got really numb, and then when it left, it my hands were like normal. It could have been just the wind, but I think whatever whatever came in the car was definitely weird, and I didn't like it. These are the stories of real people from across the country who have had experiences with the unknown. If you have a story to tell, write to us at Highland Entertainment, P.O. Box 2036, Old Chelsea Station, New York, New York, 10113. Tell us your real scary story. Someone's reaching out and grabbing you. Oh my god. Are real. <laughs> they aren't just real scary stories. <laughs> They're scary stories that are real. Oh god. The Real Scary Stories Marathon continues with another episode next, part of the 13 Nights of Halloween on ABC Family. Are you scared? Ah!